Today on TV Diners, Texas-style dining in Austin, Franco-Japanese cuisine from Beverly Hills, and find out what's luring the crowd to this New York cafe. Hi, well, if you like the adventure of going out to eat in restaurants, this is a show for you, and I'm Bill Box. Good to be with you. And I'm Nina Griscom. Welcome back. Our first stop is Texas to check out a restaurant considered to be, by some, the best eating spot in Austin. The place is called Jeffrey's, and it's been in Austin for almost 20 years. The owners have a reputation for hiring creative cooks, and then doing the best thing you can do with a creative cook, which is turn them loose in the kitchen. Jeffrey Weinberger and his partners, Ron and Peggy Weiss, say Jeffrey's has always been a showcase for creative chefs, and we give them free license to show off their creativity. The current chef, David Garrido, is the fifth in the restaurant's history and undoubtedly one of the most original, as you're going to soon see. Do you consider elk scallopini an original dish? I sure do. That's on the <laughs> menu here. Would you think that rabbit pate with dry sherry and mustard arugula salad would be kind of a creative dish? I would say that's very creative. I think so, too. Sounds delicious. Well, you know, uh, Texas cuisine incorporates a lot of different things. You've got the Southwest. You've got game. You've got uh, some Oriental influences coming in sometimes in terms of the herbs mm -hmm. used. So, I mean, you're really, it's a free on the range, so to speak, to do anything you want. You can be here. macho. You're in Texas. It's you perfect though, right? You don't have to worry about being something we don't like, politically correct. No, we don't like that. You can uh, put testosterone in the food. <laughs> That's right. right. Well, you don't need it because it's in the air in Texas. This is an, uh, uh, Jeffrey's is an 80-seat restaurant. And I always like to, you know, not always, but sometimes hone in on how large a place is. Because if you talk to a chef, really get them to talk about how many meals they can turn out a night at their absolute right. best. Frequently, you'll find that they once, once they get over an 80-seat restaurant or a 90-seat restaurant, then their quality control can, not necessarily, but it can suffer. Well, I don't blame them. It's pretty yeah. tough to, to keep it in control after that. Right. But they serve meals to go here as well, which is pretty okay. nice. And also they do something that's unusual for a sort of a top-flight formal restaurant, uh, which is to serve half portions. That is Usually, very you know, unusual. They don't it? like that. Give me a half portion. They don't like it. Restaurant they consider that you're giving them attitude when you ask for a half portion. But a lot of people really don't want that huge amount of food on their plate and just want to have a little bit. They've lured in celebrities over the years. Clint Eastwood, yes. Kim Bassinger, Lily Tomlin, wow. Rishnikov have all stopped by. Not bad. Well, this That's place right. sounds hot, and I guess by all accounts, it's meant to be the top restaurant in Austin. So let's go take a look at Jeffrey's. <laughs> Unfortunately... It must be true what they say about Texas. Everything's larger than life. Bigger, taller, higher. Just look at this food. A virtual skyscraper of beef. A dessert that climbs higher than its calorie count. What magic's coming out of the kitchen at Jeffrey's? This seemingly low-key restaurant boasts a first-class reputation among Austin's most discriminating diners. These days, this storefront, which dates back to the 30s, hides a well-run restaurant that seats 80. Here, gourmet food is served against a backdrop of low lighting and fine art that affords a romantic and private quality to this seemingly cozy little restaurant. Executive chef David Garrido combined his culinary skill, creativity, and travel experiences to develop a gourmet menu that's put Jeffrey's on the map. I live in a lot of different countries. I live in uh, Geneva and Washington State, Mexico City, Costa Rica, Puerto Rico. You know, the other different cultures, they, they have different cuisines that gave me the idea of mixing and matching different foods that works. I think that's what I like best about the cuisine I do. The exotic mix of herbs, produce, and spices gleaned from Garrido's globe-trotting past make for a distinctive menu. Jeffrey's executive chef surprises customers with his combinations of foods and flavors. Here, what looks like the beginnings of a salad turns into a bed of oysters surrounded by yucca root chips sprinkled with pepper. Garrido cooks in the style of Texas cuisine. This method pulls together influences from Texas, Santa Fe, surrounding states, Mexico, and the Gulf. We are influenced by a lot of chilies, I think. I like chilies a lot. Austin likes chilies a lot. It's the kind of food they like. They like, they like tortillas. They like um, Texas beef. It's very, very good. Texas game. Um, we get a lot of fresh seafood from 
it's down south, and uh, that's kind of what we use for the cuisine that we do. Garrido approaches food more like an artist than a chef. Everything must combine really well. The flavors, the qualities, the textures, and the colors. As they do here in this pork dish, covered with crab nectarine relish and laced with black bean port sauce. Many of the dishes prepared at Jeffrey's are made with herbs grown in the restaurant's outdoor garden. Then we have rosemary here, oregano, we have more pears, more rosemary. We have some, um, some mint marigold. And we Using have all this, Garrido continues to create exotic combinations that have established Jeffrey's as a top-ranked restaurant in Austin. Thanks in large part to the handiwork of this self-taught chef, this is Texas-style dining at its best. Very nice. Seri a serious restaurant with a very casual feel. I think that's the way everything's going, which is yeah. fine by me. That's no okay more of this sort too. of get-dressed-up stuff anymore. And labor, highly labor-intensive food. Some of the yeah. shots of the food really indicates that they're not just, you know, throwing it on the plate. No, well, it's almost architectural, uh, mm -hmm. as you see sometimes by Alfred Portales cooking in New York. Right. Excellent, excellent food, looking food. And this chef has traveled all over the world. I gather has lived in many different places all his life and so speaks three different languages. His food so speaks a couple of different languages, too. His food does, you're right. They, they have a regular, uh, regular menu here and a, actually a more simplified bistro menu, which also seems to be another, uh, another trend. Right, You can go right. two different ways in the same house. And they have outdoor seating. We've, we've mentioned quite a few restaurants recently that have both indoor and outdoor seating. Gee, the only thing we didn't see was a wood-burning oven. I don't know. You're right. That's the only thing they're missing. I bet they have one hidden away somewhere. It's true. Well, I like the looks of Jeffries, and Austin, Texas, looks to, by all accounts, is a wonderful city. A lot of creative food and right? a lot of music in the air down in Austin. A lot of music. You're right. Yeah. And near Nashville, well, not, not, I'm losing my mind. I was going to say near Nashville, but we're in the wrong state. That's Tennessee, and we're in Texas. That's right. Forgive me. I'm having an attack. All right. If you want to find Jeffries in Austin, Texas, that is, they're at 1204 West Lynn. And they're at 512-477-5584. They're closed on Sunday. Credit cards accepted, and the average meal at Jeffrey's is about $40. The chef recommends the oysters with yuca root chips and habanero honey aioli. Or you might try the beef tenderloin with horseradish potatoes, rajas, and chipotle barbecue sauce. Or maybe the duck, which is served with wild mushroom risotto and a sun-dried tomato sauce. And when we return, though, we're going to be off to Beverly Hills in search of some Franco-Japanese cuisine. We'll be right back. Cooking. Dining. News. Talk. Hell, you're watching the TV Food Network. Isn't it time you lightened up? Your meals, that is. Show, I'm Curtis Aiken, just raring to go. Curtis Aiken shows you how to cook and eat healthier as he turns up the heat without it's using so meat. It. It's real simple. Meals easy. without meat. Watch me every day and I'm just... If you've got a passion for produce, learn how to be a garden gourmet. Ooh, all right. Yeah, that's nice. I like that. Watch Meals Without Meat only on the TV Food Network. Tonight at 9. This program is brought to you in part by New Handle Sack Bags. You can do a hard job the hard way or the hefty way. Okay, half time. New Hefty Handle Sack Bags with helping handles. Cool. Big, wide handles to handle almost anything. <laughs> They're easy to close and keep closed without leaking. They're a lot easier than these for no more cost than these. So let Hefty handle it. New Hefty Handle Sack. You choose the hard way or the hefty way. Certain people are feeling pretty lonely these days. Cool. Since everyone's found out about new Manwich Taco and Burrito Seasoning Sauces, they're rich, thick, seasoned just right. Now Manwich lets you make great tasting tacos and burritos at home. Nacho Nation. Oh, we just ran out of tacos. New Manwich Taco and Burrito Seasoning Sauces in the Manwich section. Where else? Not long ago, I started tap dancing. And almost eight miles later, I arrived in the world record book. That takes a lot of juice. Sunsweet prune juice. All the juice you need. Welcome back. Well, you know, it's always good news when an outstanding chef resurfaces with a new restaurant. 
A few years back, Los Angeles mourned the closing of a tiny storefront along Beverly Hills run by Tommy Harase. Now, the cafe that became the place for Franco-Japanese cuisine is back in business. Harase has opened Nouveau Cafe Blanc in Beverly Hills. Critics say that little has changed in the move west, including the prices. The new Cafe Blanc is a smidgen larger than its predecessor. This one seats 32 people. You need to make reservations. There are two seatings each night for dinner. Rumor has it it is well worth the wait. Talk about cre uh, controlling the amount of food you're able to put on the tables. Well, definitely this is a good thing. I mean, it's a wonderful menu. And right. I, I like very much the feeling of a small place that only has 12 tables. It feels like you're in someone's actual, in the, someone's dining room. Right. This, this is right. 12 tables. I don't know why it is, Bill, but this is located, as we said, in Beverly Hills. Mm -hmm. And uh, in Los Angeles, of course, there are a million wonderful restaurants, Santa Monica, all surrounding areas. But for some reason, Beverly Hills has had a problem establishing a few good restaurants and this is clearly one of them and there are a couple others but it's not a huge amount of them there well Tommy really definitely has a following he was at Chinois Chin Chinois That's excuse right. me and he and Spago and, and Spago so That's he, right. he he's got a following there and his food is like we just saw in 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 the previous video his food is very labor intensive he's able yes. to put a plate out with a great deal of, of care again because of the, 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 the small amount of dinners he has to turn out right. nightly. he also uh, cooked at Le Grand Vefort in Paris which one is one of the great great restaurants there so I imagine that he has a lot of classical French training in combination with a Southern California sensibility and it would probably be a very good combination right we're, we're talking about French food that's being filtered through a Japanese mentality with some creativity right. they have something there called a vertical Caesar salad now we've had Caesar What's salad that? coming. <laughs> if the vertical Caesar salad actually comes to you looking like a flower arrangement, like this, Beautiful. and it's your job to knock it down and make it look more like a normal Caesar that salad. That sounds like a job I'd like to take on. Right. This is a restaurant where you could truly say that small is beautiful. So why don't we take a journey to that one-of-a-kind place in the United States, Beverly Hills, and go inside tiny Nouveau Cafe One. Good things come in small packages, and that being the case, Nouveau Café Blanc is a tiny gem in an age of gargantuan restaurants. The Beverly Hills Café has just 12 tables. It is a miniature showcase for the considerable talents of a young Japanese chef named Tommy Harase. The original Café Blanc shut down two years ago. It was there that Harase won a loyal following for turning out superior food at bargain prices. Now, following a sabbatical in his native Japan, Harase is back in business in an even crisper, whiter, smarter setting. It is the food that draws the crowd to this tiny establishment. The menu is described as French with a Japanese flair. It's California French, which is it's lighter than authentic French. And uh, it's, it's mixed with a uh, little bit of uh, Asian Oriental style. Uh, like uh, Chinese, uh, Japanese. Within this realm of fresh, light French cooking, the flavors are bright, the products are carefully chosen, and the food is colorful. This rock shrimp salad combines carrots, celery, onions, and tomatoes, bedded on in dive and seasoned with cilantro. At the new Cafe Blanc, Harase and his staff work out of a kitchen the size of a large Chevy van. There's no room for stacking dishes, so they're placed on this box, washed and recycled as they appear. The very presence of our cameraman posed a logistical logjam in a space where every inch counts. Harase moves about his tiny domain, operating with military precision. Every movement is exact, every motion precise. In these quarters, there's no space for excess.